Hello, everyone. I'm Sierra. And I'm Ashley. And this is your Weekly Weekly Dose of Wicked. Hello, everyone. What's up? We're here on another Wednesday. Your favorite day of the week. (laughs) Hump day! I was just about to say that. (laughs) All right, let's get down to business. We got a list of things to cover real quick. Uh, First things first. First things first on the relist. Okay, anyways. Moving on. News this week. Um... No new Patreons. We have no new Patreons because we haven't given you a chance to give us any new Patreons because we are recording two episodes in one night because we got behind schedule because we are slackers. We just recorded our last episode um, about 10 minutes ago. We took a water break and we reconvened. Yep. And so here we are. We're trying to get ourselves two weeks ahead because we have busy lives and it takes me a long time to edit because I know that our podcast sounds professionally mastered and edited, but um, I have no idea what the hell I'm doing. And it actually takes me a long time to do it. I'm sure it does. It does. It takes me a long time. So from here on out, if you become a Patreon member, you won't get a shout out for hopefully at least two weeks. We might even get more ahead. I doubt it, but just be prepared. Um, Speaking of the Patreon, how do you join that? You go to patreon.com and you search a weekly dose of wicked. Or you can just go to www.patreon.com forward slash weekly dose of wicked. We have three amazing tiers. We have the moderately wicked starting at $5, the awesomely wicked for $7, and the extraordinarily wicked for $10. Each tier has its own perks. Definitely worth checking out. I recently updated the Patreon page with some more info of what our goals are with that platform so go give it a look see if you like what you see uh we do currently now have two bonus contents up maybe by the time this airs we might have a third who knows and one of them is us being idiots and we think it's funny i think it's mostly just me yeah it is mostly you making a fool of myself it's mostly you being stupid yeah yeah mo- most of it's just me being stupid but i mean i thought it was funny i found it funny i laughed a lot Anyway, moving on. Away from the Patreon. Next order of business. Uh, I didn't make a list, so it was the next order of business. Uh, I thought that was it. No, we had more orders of business. Uh, let's see. What else? If you haven't already, please go to Apple Podcasts and leave us a rating or review. Or both. Ideally, a rating and a review. That would be ideal. I feel like, I feel like we just spend a good chunk of the episode begging people to like us. Yeah, we do. I think it's probably pretty annoying to people. Probably is, but hey, you know what? Got to do what you got to do. So if you haven't already, please go to Apple Podcasts, leave us a rating and review. Tell us how much you love us. Uh, What else do we need to talk about? Instagram. If you haven't already, please follow us on Instagram at weekly underscore dose underscore of underscore wicked. Post uh, content on there every Wednesday to go along with our episodes. If you are visual and you need to see the pictures, then that's where you want to go. All right. Next order of business. This episode is airing on August 31st of 2022, which means fall is tomorrow. Yes, fall is tomorrow. Uh, the actual first day of fall is September 21st, but we choose to believe that it's... 22nd. Oh, 22nd. I'm so sorry. My apologies. Get it right. Uh, I'm I'm sorry. I'm an idiot. Yes, you are. Anyway, we choose to believe that the first day of fall is on September 1st. As you could tell from our what last two episodes, we love fall and we love pumpkin. It's our favorite time of the year. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, so anyway, on September 1st, which is tomorrow, we will both be decorating decking the halls with all things pumpkin and all things fall and all things buffalo plaid yes it is also our birthday month yes yes it is because we both have birthdays in september so we'll be celebrating all month long fun fact i will not be celebrating all month long because unlike ashley i don't actually care about birthdays but ashley is very much a birthday fanatic i am it's your day to be queen of the world or your month if you're ashley or king of the world if you're a man yes um, fun fact, we are two out of four siblings, and three of us all have September birthdays. You know what that means? Mom and Dad like to get freaky in December. <laughs> Do you think they'll appreciate that? Probably, because they're gross. I think they'll love that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Those cold winter nights. Those cold winter nights. Okay, let's stop talking about our parents, too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they talk about it enough. Gross. 
Uh, anyway, what else we got? I think that's it. Do we have any more important? I don't think so. I think that's it. Oh, no, I actually do have something. Uh, for anyone who cares, I'm sure most of you don't care. Um, since I want to say our episode on Bethany Deaton. So at this point, we've put out Bethany Deaton. We've put out the Holland family. and No, I guess since the Holland family. No, Bethany Deaton. Yes. I don't know what you're trying to say. I'm going to tell you. Hold on. So since since we put out our episode on Bethany Deaton, the day that that episode aired, we had about 30 subscribers to our podcast. And what that means is if you're subscribed to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, uh, it doesn't really work the same for Spotify, I don't believe. But if you're subscribed, what happens is uh, the day that it airs around midnight, it goes ahead and it like adds it to your library of podcasts. So I know how many people are subscribed because it's like a massive jump in numbers of how many people like all downloaded at the same time. When Bethany Deaton aired, which was back on August 5th, we had 30 subscribers. Okay. So since then, today, we aired The Conspiracy of John Paca. We now have 137 subscribers. Did you say something? Because it was silent. I said, wow. Yeah. No, for real. <laughs> That's a lot. Uh, it's a big increase. So it's like four times almost. Yeah. So thank you to no, more than four times. Yep. Wow, thanks, guys. Four times would be 120. So more than four times. About four and a half times. Yeah. Woohoo. About four and a half times as many subscribers. I mean, I know it's still not like massive, but hey, I love all 137 of you. You're all our friends. I mean, most of them probably are our friends. <laughs> well, <laughs> we don't have that many friends. Let's be real. No, we don't. Uh, but no, very cool. I was very, I mean, it means a lot. I really appreciate everyone that tunes into us each week and listens. Yes, we would not be here without you. This is true. So anyway, thank you. And thank you to all the people who aren't subscribed to listen as well. Because normally, I mean, throughout the week, we gain more, you know, downloads, more listens. Um, Bethany Deaton, like I said, that episode aired. We had 30 followers or 30 subscribers. It now has 269 people that have listened to it. But that's just Apple, right? subscriber no that's all of them okay. no that's all of them at that point like that's between everything that we're on i just know the apple subscribers because as far as i know apple's the only one that does that auto download gotcha on onto your devices gotcha, gotcha. so i mean i could be just completely making all of that up i don't know <laughs> Maybe. i'm learning as i go but that's kind of that's kind of how it seems should be pretty accurate but hey you know what i just whatever it's cool i want to thank everyone that's listening um as of today we have an all time of i think like 1700 downloads 1665 downloads which means pretty close 1700 yeah that's pretty good pretty cool so thank you thank you everyone all right moving on moving on you ready for me to start i am is this case going to be as good as my last episode I don't know. There's no falsely accused people in it, so... Okay. So probably not. I mean, I think you could look at that both ways. No falsely <laughs> accused people, better? Is it as crazy? Probably not. And you've probably also heard the story before, because when I told you her name, you were like, hmm, I know that name. I, it just sounded familiar to me. I don't know that I actually know that name. So I first saw this episode on a little show I like to watch called Killer Couples. Oh, so is this killer couples? I thought we weren't doing any more spousal murders. No, it's the couples kill someone. Oh, that's fun. It's like a nice little hobby they do together. <laughs> yeah, a nice little hobby. That doesn't sound crazy at all. <laughs> sometimes it's on the show. Sometimes it's a spouse. Like they're having an affair. So they kill one of their spouses. Sometimes they go on like a revenge thing and kill other people it just kind of depends but this one no they did not kill a spouse okay i made sure that i did not do a spouse one okay but i had watched this episode when it probably first came out i don't know like a year or two ago and i was wrecking my brain for what case i'm gonna do and then i was like "Ooh, that's a fun one so i watched it again i think that people probably will take offense to us thinking that people getting killed are fun yeah, I know. We probably shouldn't say that. It's not a fun one. I mean... It's actually not fun at all. It's actually gross. Okay. But I just... I mean, I feel like anyone... I feel like most people that listen have the same mentality as us, so it probably won't offend them. But I just think that we need to clarify, at, like, regularly that we don't think murder is fun. Or funny. No, we do not think murder is fun. Or funny. Or funny. I just feel like those are the wrong words. It's interesting. I mean, murder fascinates me. 
It does. The psych yes. fascinates me. Like, I went into the wrong career. Agreed. I should have been a psychologist, psychiatrist of serial killers. That's what I should have been. I should have been a PI. I think you'd probably be pretty good at that. I actually want to change careers. I would like to become an autopsy tech. Yeah. Well, I think it'd be really cool, but like, I don't know if I'd be cool with like being with dead people all day. I don't know. If I had the willpower to go back to school, though, I would like to become a psychologist. I feel you. Um, I would like to be a PI or I would like to work for the FBI. Well, you've always wanted to work for the FBI. As a forensic accountant. At Quantico. At Quantico in Virginia. <laughs> I'm sure you all knew exactly where Quantico was, but who knows? Maybe they do. All right. Let's get into it. Tell me about Shonda. Sheila. Sheila. Sheila, baby. <laughs> Sheila, baby. Tell me about Sheila, baby. All righty. So on August 12th of 2012, a cab driver dropped off some guests at a resort in Bali, Indonesia. You said gas? Guests. Oh. <laughs> I thought you said <laughs> He dropped off some gas. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I thought you said. I thought you said he dropped off gas. And I was like, "That's weird." No, guests, guests, patrons okay. of the pronunciation. Resort. Pronunciation is key. Should I say the line again, or should I leave in that? <laughs> no, I like the gas. It's okay. fine. Okay, gives us character. Okay, so when this sir was getting ready to pull away, he was flagged down by a young man and woman. This couple placed their luggage in the trunk of his cab and said they needed to finish checking out. After 30 minutes, the couple never came back and the cab driver started to get anxious. So what did he do? He opened his trunk. Oh my god, is she in the trunk? Stop making faces. She's totally in the trunk. She's totally in the trunk. No, this isn't the case I thought it was. Yes, she's in the trunk. So after 30 minutes, he got anxious because they never came back. So he went and opened his trunk and he found just one single large suitcase wrapped up in a bed sheet and duct tape shut. While he was looking at it, there was blood beginning to seep through onto the bed sheet. Ooh, that's disgustingly creepy. Yeah, so the cab driver uh, called the cops, and they rushed to the scene. Thankfully. Inside the suitcase, they found the body of a middle-aged white woman who had been brutally beaten to death. So detectives quickly got to work, since murders were really rare on the island of Bali. They were especially rare when it comes to tourists. The island's really well known for a tourist destination. So gonna say she was she was just enjoying some beach time and right. she got murdered yes brutally beaten to death sucks. that sucks yeah, super sucks bad vacation that really sucks for sheila baby well you don't know it's sheila baby yet but okay <laughs> oh i'm sorry <laughs> we said her name was sheila didn't we i thought i mean yeah but it's fine it's literally like i don't know two sentences down and so anyways i thought you said it was <laughs> sheila in the intro oh, maybe i did maybe not maybe you just told me maybe you told me privately i'm sorry that's okay that really sucks for that middle-aged white woman found in the suitcase. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the middle-aged Whose woman. name I do not know. No. Okay, so anyways, um, they knew that their economy really relied on tourists. So the police immediately were right on the case because they knew that they had to find out who was responsible and fast to keep up their tourism. So they started questioning the resort and they turned over all of the copies of the guest passports. The cops groomed through these and found one person who was not accounted for that also matched the description of the victim found in the cab. This woman was, are you ready? Sheila Von Wiesmack. Oh my gosh. I'm so shocked. <laughs> so shocked and surprised. So shocked. I didn't even see that coming. <laughs> so Sheila was a 62-year-old 62, 62 socialite from Chicago who was on a luxurious vacation with her daughter, Heather Mack. Heather was a 19-year-old who grew up in an elite area in Chicago called Oak Park. Why was her name Sheila Von Wiesmack, but her daughter was just Mack? Because she was a socialite, so she had to keep her like maiden name. She like hyphenated it. Oh, okay. That makes sense. I wouldn't know. I'm not a socialite. You're not a sociolite? <laughs> I said a social. I said a social. A socialite. <laughs> I said social. I'm not. I'm not a sociolite. Nor do I know any. Sheila was a fancy lady. Sounds like it. At 62 years old, that's amazing. Amazingly shocking. <laughs> um, Heather grew up in the elite area of Chicago called Oak Park. She was just your typical spoiled rich girl. She was an only child who was very spoiled with traveling throughout the world with her parents, but especially her dad. Heather's dad and Sheila's husband, James Mack, had died nine years earlier on a vacation to Greece, where he had a pulmonary embolism and died in front of his wife and 10-year-old daughter, Heather. Um, that's really not that important, but I just thought pulmonary embolism, you know, I do pulmonary rehab, so I thought it was an interesting fact. I understand. It's like when I made the poor joke about the gutters and the smoke. Right, and no one understood it except me. Right. Well, and like dad and... Allison. I wonder if dad appreciated like, I, it. Probably not. I mean, yeah, because most of the people who don't know us. So for those that don't know, Ashley does pulmonary rehab and I run my dad's gutter company. Those are our careers. 
So, um, James died in front of um, Sheila and Heather. And Heather and her father were very close, so this traumatic event took a real toll on Heather. She never really dealt with this tragedy, and it continued to affect her throughout her teenage years. At first, this really strengthened the relationship between Heather and Sheila, and they just bonded through travel, like Heather and her dad once did. But this changed when Heather got older. She began to deal with her grief by partying and experimenting with drugs and alcohol, which put a real strain on Heather and her mom's relationship. They began to fight constantly, which often resulted in Heather running away from home and staying gone for a few days before she'd return. And their decaying relationship is what led Heather and Sheila on their trip to Bali. They took a trip hoping to mend their relationship and reconnect. And then Sheila died. That's yes. sad. Yes. Did Heather kill her? No response? Okay. No response. <laughs> I mean, I'll edit that out, obviously. No. I think that's who killed her. Oh, she did it? No. I mean, she... Wait. Okay. So, since Sheila was on the trip with her daughter, the police had to look for Heather. So, they were thinking the worst. You know, Heather was dead, or Sheila was dead. So, they were thinking Heather was involved, too. Maybe she was dead. Maybe something happened. She was kidnapped. You know, they're really thinking the worst right now. So, they called the room. No one answered it. So, they went and searched the room. The police found a horrifying scene. There were bloodstains everywhere. Broken glass a broken decorative bowl whose metal handle was covered in blood. The room looked like there had been a brutal attack with a real struggle. Well, that's not good. No, not good at all. So the medical examiner confirmed that the body in the trunk was Sheila, and the attack was vicious, just as they had suspected. Sheila had a broken nose, broken neck, and several severe facial injuries. I like these. This was going to be a fun case. (laughs) You're You're a sociopath, I swear to God. Okay, it's gonna be a fun one. <laughs> she has a broken neck, a broken nose. Like, what is wrong? With you? I don't mean fun in the normal fun sense. I mean like fun, as in like true crime fun, which is not fun. It's the opposite of fun. No, but it's horrifying. Yes. So, anyways, her cause of death was asphyxiation caused from her broken nose and choking on her own blood from the brutal beating. Oh, even better. Yes. But you would really think it would be like, I don't know, like she had like all kinds of like broken bones on her face. You would think it would be like blunt force trauma to the head. That's what I suspected. But no, it's asphyxiation. Uh, do you know the difference between asphyxiation and suffocation? No. So I looked it up earlier because of my case that I did. I mean, asphyxi- let me let me guess. Okay. Asphyxiation is when like your airway is cut off and suffocation is when like it's blocked. Like, right? Uh, no. no. Okay. My guess was wrong. So essentially, I mean, essentially from like what I read. Okay, because I was trying to decide earlier with the last case I did, if the dude with the duct tape on his mouth was suffocated or asphyxiated, like what the difference was. Right. So essentially asphyxiation is like when the amount of oxygen is like cut off due to another substance, I guess, kind of. So like, I guess the blood. Right. Or like CO2. Those are asphyxiation. Suffocation is when the airway like you you don't have access for air i also earlier was telling allison i was like oh yeah that's those are fun like suffocation asphyxiation and she was like yeah that's a fun little song i've never heard <laughs> well, i knew the song too what's the song it's not a song we made it up because it's the song on um precipitation evaporation condensation on my mind it's like the science song yeah we yeah, both yeah. learned in like elementary school but like <laughs> I meant the I tune. Turned it what in. is the? S- <laughs> I didn't mean what's the song with those words. I meant what's the <laughs> tune? <laughs> like what song is that from? That's what it's what from. That is the participation song. Pers- per- you know what I'm trying to say? Yes. yes, yes, yes. But yeah, but I was like, I was like, oh yeah, I was like, suffocation, asphyxiation. What's the third one? And she's like, I'm, I'm not sure. I've never heard that fun little ditty. <laughs> she's like, you're, you're so weird. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can let her know that I started singing it too. So. <laughs> <laughs> with no context <laughs> maybe we should go to bed <laughs> recording two episodes on one night was not a good idea i think it was a great idea because when we get tired we get so giggly <laughs> yeah but no one wants to listen to us giggle for an hour they might okay okay anyways so heather was still unaccounted for at this time so the police went to work to find her they questioned the resort employees, and that's when a desk clerk came forward to report that she saw Sheila and Heather in the lobby at 3 a.m. She says that Sheila came to the lobby frantic that Heather was missing. 
Sheila said Heather was not in the room and not anywhere at the at the resort that she could find. She knew Heather had a reputation of running away and was concerned that Heather had done that in a foreign country. And that would be a horrible idea. Horrible idea. Should uh, never run away in a foreign country because you don't know their laws, first no. of all. Second of all, depending on the foreign country, they are rampant with criminals. <laughs> yes. No offense to any of our foreign listeners because I'm sure all your countries are fine. Well, but. Indonesia is a third world country, so... Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, there's plenty of third world countries that people are like, let's go to a resort and hang out on the beach. But, like, you should never leave the resort because you will. Well, because, unfortunately, um, all of our tourist destinations that we like to go spend all our money at are third world countries because we suck. Yes, I agree. Says the girl who just came back, who just came back from an all-inclusive resort. (laughs) Yeah, I know. I suck. Yeah. It was a real humbling experience, though. Was it? I would like to say that I do not suck. I've never been to a third world country. To a vacation? Vacation. I've never been to one at all, so I guess That's I do just, suck. I just feel like it's a real shitty, like, thing to do. But at the same time, you're giving their, uh, them money, their economy, so maybe it's not so shitty. I don't know. I don't know where we stand on that topic. We don't get political. Keep moving. Yeah. Okay, anyways. People so... come here for the fun banter of people dying, not to listen to us be political. Right, right, right. So, anyways, third world country, um, Sheila knew that sex trafficking was at a greater risk, so she was concerned that that would be her daughter's fate. So, with the hotel's help, she began to organize a search for Heather. But as soon as the search was beginning, Heather walked into the lobby, holding the hand of her boyfriend, Tommy Schaefer. Did her boyfriend come on vacation with them? Not that Sheila knew. Oh, okay. So, Tommy was just like, surprise! Yep. So, this is the first time, it was just supposed to be a mother-daughter vacation. This is the first time she has seen Mr. Tommy. That's what I thought interesting yes interesting so heather and tommy had met at a party where he was performing heather was instantly attracted to him tommy was smart attractive athletic and an aspiring musician he grew up in poverty with a single mother on the west side of chicago his mom did everything that she could to give him a better life and sent him to school in oak park where he did great in school with sports fun fact heather also is from oak park he was determined to follow his dreams why is that a fun fact because he's from a different part of chicago but he went to school, the same place she is from. Okay, I don't think that's that interesting, but okay. Okay, I guess it's really not. I don't know. I mean, I would assume they would be from the same... Okay. He was determined to follow his dreams of becoming a rapper. A rapper? Ooh. Yeah, a rapper. I'm a rapper as well. So at one of his performances... <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> I, you can rap one song that does not make I you a rapper. I think I'm a rapper. If I drink a little. Okay, well, you're not. You can be stone cold sober and you still like to rap. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways at one of his performances he met heather they hooked up and immediately fell head over heels for each other they became inseparable heather was mostly attracted to his musical abilities her father who had died nine years before that was a famous jazz composer and producer and this similarity pulled her to tommy as it filled that void that she was missing with her father being gone and dating a famous musician's daughter was also very beneficial to tommy because it helped him in his career i'm sure it did I'm sure. You know what this makes me think of? Uptown Girls. Yeah. (laughs) That was right. (laughs) Well, because like Brittany Murphy, God rest her soul. I miss her so much. She was an amazing actress. Um, She she plays like the daughter of like a musician, right? Yeah. And then like, doesn't, isn't her boyfriend that she's with like a musician as well? Yeah. But no one ended up in a trunk of a cab. So That's true. But okay. I guess they're not really that alike. I just... Thought made me think made me think of Uptown Girls. You know how much I love that movie. I do too. I need to watch it. Yeah, let's watch it on Friday. Okay. Anyways, so this was really the first time since Heather's dad died that she really seemed happy. However, her mother Sheila did not approve of this relationship. She didn't because mothers are awful. <laughs> <laughs> you know nothing about Sheila. I said mothers are awful. Okay. In general. In general. Okay. So she didn't believe that Tommy was any good for Heather, and he enabled her risky behavior of partying and drugs. Sheila voiced these concerns to Heather and insisted that she go to therapy, but this just put a larger wedge in their relationship. So her disdain for Tommy and Heather's relationship is why the desk clerk recalls this confrontation that Sheila saw Heather with Tommy in Bali. When she saw Sheila with... No, let me start that over. (laughs) (laughs) This is it. (laughs) No. (laughs) Because I, I don't know what I was trying to fix. I was just, like, trying to fix things, but, like, it wasn't making any sense even when I was trying to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> so, in 
So the strong disdain for Tommy and Heather's relationship is why the desk clerk recalls this confrontation when Sheila saw Heather with Tommy and Bali. The clerk said that the confrontation started when Sheila accused Heather of stealing her credit card to bring Tommy to Bali. Oh, what the hell, Heather? Yeah, what the That's hell, That's a douchebag move. Mom sucked, but Heather kind of sucks so far. I was just joking about mom sucking. I was just being funny. <laughs> they don't really suck. Mothers are the light of the world, and if it weren't for them, literally... We wouldn't be here. No good things would happen in the world without mothers. I was literally joking. I'm a mother. I was really just poking fun at mom, because, you know, that's what I do. She loves when we make fun of her. No, she doesn't. <laughs> she, no, she hates doesn't. it. Hates it greatly. She thinks every time we say anything, we're making fun of her. So, yeah. Anytime we laugh. Mm -hmm. What'd you say about me? So it wasn't the first time that Heather had stolen her mom's credit card for her to have a good time with Tommy. Previously, Heather stole her mom's credit card and booked a room at a hotel to throw a party with Tommy. Sheila found out about this and called the cops to stop the party and get the couple arrested. So she thought that, you know, that made Heather learn her lesson. But when Tommy showed up in Bali, that was not the case. Uh, clearly not. <laughs> clearly she learned nothing from being arrested. Clearly. Sheila said that there was no way Tommy could have afforded that trip on his own, but they insisted that Tommy came to surprise Heather and she knew nothing about his arrival until just before she had saw Sheila. Well, yeah, because he's a broke-ass musician. How was he right. getting to Bali? Right. On uh, Sheila's credit card. Right. I would be pissed. Yeah, well, she was pissed. I would freaking, I would beat her butt. <laughs> I would put her over my knee. Yeah. She's quite angry. So he said that his love for Heather was so intense that he couldn't stand to be away from her any longer. And that's why he had to come surprise her in Bali. Oh my god. Bleh. Yeah. That's disgusting. But young love, 19 and 21. That's freaking Okay. Okay, Tommy. So this made Sheila even angrier. And this confrontation grew much louder and started attracting quite a bit of attention, which made Heather mad that her mom was causing such a scene. So Heather begged her mom to stop, and the three of them went to their rooms. A little while later, Heather came back to the desk alone in search of duct tape. Oh, snap. Yeah. So this story made the cops have more questions, which I'm sure we all do. What did you want to do with the duct tape, Heather? Right. After she was just seen yelling, and her mom yelling right. at her, and her boyfriend. That's pretty dumb. I swear to God, sometimes we watch or listen to these, and, like, they just do the stupidest things. Like, there are so many of them that I listen to, I'm like, they, they could have gotten away with it if they just been a little smarter. Yeah. yeah, definitely. I mean, not saying that I want murderers to get away with it, but. No, you don't want them to get away with it, but, like, if you're going to do it, at least try to be smart. Right. Yeah. Idiots. Good, though. So at this point in their investigation, Heather was still unaccounted for when they had found Sheila in the suitcase and were searching for Heather. So they weren't sure if they were concerned that she was missing and that she had possibly been killed as well. Or if she was missing because she was a suspect in her mother's death. I can see why they would think that. Yeah, that tip that she'd been searching for duct tape really made them suspicious. I don't blame them. What else would she need duct tape for? Perhaps right. to duct and tape the suitcase. the suitcase. was found duct taped, yes. Right. Idiots. Idiots, yes. So after this, the cops got the security footage, which showed that after the confrontation downstairs, Tommy went up to his room on the sixth floor, and Heather and Sheila went to their room on the third floor. About one hour later, Tommy went to Heather and Sheila's room. Heather answered the door, and Tommy went inside. Shortly after this, the two of them together made several trips between their two rooms, going up and down the stairs, and finally settling back in Heather's room. Around noon, the couple emerged again with just one large suitcase and got a luggage cart. Interesting, considering this room was full of blood. Yes. <clears throat> so they took the luggage cart to the cab where they put the suitcase in the trunk and went back inside the lobby to check out. But they were unable to do so since the room was in Sheila's name. And Sheila was MIA at this point. Um, so she had to be the one to check out since it was in her name. So they left the lobby and they ran. They jumped a wall and crossed the street where they hailed a second cab and left in the direction of the airport. After seeing these videos, the police searched the room again where they found Heather's passport still in the safe. So they thought that the couple was trying to go to the airport to flee the country, but this was impossible because Heather did not have her airport. <laughs> <laughs> Heather did not have her airport. <laughs> uh. Heather did not have her airport. <laughs> Damn, Heather. Why would you forget your airport? <laughs> what is wrong with her? <laughs> Whew, okay. Uh. <laughs> you can tell we're tired. Yeah. This is a, so, a weekly dose of Wicked after bedtime. 
Yeah, too late. Too late to be recording. Because I watched too many Lifetime movies last night. I didn't get enough sleep and you stayed up too late researching. <laughs> yeah, so it's like two I'm nights. Black ass. <laughs> oh, at least you didn't do it directly before your episode. <laughs> like like that's you. what I did. Yeah, I got that shit done. Yeah, that's all that matters. So they knew that the couple was still in the country because they didn't have their passport. Anyone who has traveled to a, another country knows that like if your passport is like the only thing that anyone cares about. Like, everywhere you go, they need your passport. Everything you do, they need your passport for. It's very annoying. Yeah. Because I, in I the US, know. you do not have to have your passport for anything. Right. I got a passport, what, three years ago? Four years mm-hmm. ago? And it has sat in my safe ever since. Note to self. Steal Ashley's passport out of her safe. Well, my safe is locked. Note to self. I probably know the pin. It has a key. Oh, okay. Fine. <laughs> and it's Tyler's safe. So, note to self, steal the whole safe, smash it. <laughs> I don't know if that would work, but anyways. So, anything you do, you need a passport for. So, she doesn't have it, so they they know there's really not much she can do. So, they know they're still in the country because they can't fly. So, the cops enlist the help of the media to find them. They blast pictures of them all over the news, and the manhunt is on. The next day, a motel about six miles from the resort contacts the police. They say that a young couple had just checked in the man not only recognized them from their pictures all over the news but also this couple used their real names when checking in freaking idiots freaking idiots what are you eating I, i'm eating a honey bun but i had to unmute myself so i could say that <laughs> i'm so hungry idiots i need to eat my whole dinner i literally wrote that in my notes freaking idiots exclamation point exclamation point like that's so <laughs> dumb <laughs> yeah you're in a foreign country wanted for murder of a white socialite woman like you can't use your real name when you're running for killing a rich white woman yeah i don't yeah stupid so the police went to the motel and they found the couple just in the bed sleeping freaking idiots so rightfully so they were both arrested and brought in for further questioning heather and tommy were very cooperative with the police and answered all their questions willingly let me guess they denied it of course so they that all three of them Heather, Tommy, and Sheila were all kidnapped by a gang for ransom. (laughs) While they were kidnapped, they had come up with an escape plan of how they were going to get out. But when they went to put this plan into action, it failed. And only Heather and Tommy were able to escape, and Sheila could not. So the gang must have killed Sheila and put her in that cab. Must have. They must have. So there were two major plot holes with this Um, two? Number one. I feel like there were a lot of plot holes with that, but okay. <laughs> okay, well, two major ones. So number one, there were lots of gangs in Bali, and they were dangerous, but it was very rare for these gangs to target tourists. Again, they relied on the tourists for their whole economy of the country. Well, and, and the gangs were probably smarter and realized that if they, like, killed a tourist... Oh well, yeah, they leave them alone because they need them. So the areas are normally pretty safe. Especially right around resorts. Right. So number two of this Makes plot hole in me. the plan, or the plot hole in the story, is that the police had surveillance video of Tommy and Heather putting Sheila's body in a cab. But they didn't know that. <laughs> so now that the police told them, that yo idiots, we have footage of you, they realize that they are caught in a lie. So they fess up to what really happened. Okay, I'm sure that was another lie. They admitted they were not kidnapped. Shocker. Oh my god, that's so shocking. I would have never. I cannot believe that. <laughs> real plot twist right there. That's a real freaking plot twist. Yeah. So Tommy started by going back to the beginning. He said the whole reason he was even in Bali was not to surprise Heather, but to surprise Sheila. Why? Why on earth would he want to surprise Sheila? Sheila hates him. Right. Because they had some exciting news that they wanted to share. They were pregnant. And that couldn't wait until they got back. Well, no, because they knew Sheila wasn't going to be happy. So they thought, what a better place to break the news. But in paradise, she won't be as mad if she's on the beach in Bali. I feel like Heather could have told her by herself then. Yeah, I agree. I feel like I feel like it probably just made Sheila more angry that they stole her credit card to bring Tommy there. No, no, he did it himself, remember? That's what they said. Yeah, but that wasn't true. No, that was not true. I mean, they stole her credit card. I'm sure they have evidence yeah, of that. They do. So, surprise, surprise, that did not soften the blow. And their plan was ruined when Sheila saw them early in the lobby before they could explain why Tommy was there. So that was that fight that the clerk had seen. Mm-hmm. 
Sheila was mad that Tommy was there, insisted they stole her credit card. Um, after Heather got her mom to calm down and go back to the room, Tommy got worried because of how mad Sheila was. So he really just feared for the life of his girlfriend and their baby. So he went to the room to check it out, check on him, make sure everything's okay. So when he got to the room, Heather and Sheila were still fighting, so Tommy intervened. This made Sheila even more mad, and she started fighting with Tommy. Oh, I got something wrong. He hadn't told her that she was pregnant yet. That was the plan, but she, they hadn't actually told her yet. She was just still mad that he was there. She didn't know that they were pregnant. I understand. All right. So Tommy says when he got back to the room, Heather and Sheila were still fighting, so Tommy intervened, which made Sheila even more mad, and she started fighting with Tommy. To defuse the situation, he told her the pregnancy news, and Sheila went berserk. I'm sure she did. (laughs) I'm sure she went berserk. Yeah, I don't think that was the best plan, but, you know, they thought it was, so. I agree it was a shit plan. Shit plan, yes. So, Sheila started to physically attack Tommy. This is what Tommy says. Sheila started to physically attack him. And he began to lose consciousness, and Heather was just crying, asking her mom to stop. Tommy didn't know what else to do, so in self-defense, he grabbed the fruit bowl off the table and hit her in the head. He was just trying to protect- Did Tommy have any wounds? Um, no, not that I know of. I'm just wondering, if she was, like, beating him to the point he was, like, unconscious or losing consciousness. Um, I didn't see that, that he had wounds. You would just think that if she was beating him to the point of unconsciousness, that he would be, like, bruised, bloody. Right, Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I didn't see anything about him having okay. bruises and scratches and other things. And probably, like, br- hand bruises on his neck. He was losing consciousness. I feel like she was, like, choking him. That's what I'm picturing in my head. <laughs> She's probably. like, you little piece of shit, holding him by the neck. You little baby back bitch, got my daughter pregnant. <laughs> right. That's what I'm picturing in this story that he's telling, but. I mean, I yeah, know. makes sense. Tommy was just trying to protect him himself and his family, and it was just an accident. He just accidentally beat Sheila to death. <laughs> like this <laughs> idiot. <laughs> a fruit bowl. With a fruit bowl. I mean, put her in a so, suitcase, and then put her in a suitcase, and then duct taped her up, and then left her in the cab trunk. Right. Yeah. Like, if it was truly a self-defense accident, why would he not call? Well, you know what, though? Devil's advocate here. If I accidentally killed someone in a foreign country, I would not tell anyone. I would get the hell out of Dutch. Yeah. Yeah, I probably wouldn't want to um, be in Indonesia. Yeah. Foreign countries are crazy. If I committed, I, I, that's why I don't leave the country. Or, or just don't commit crimes. Okay, but heaven forbid I make an accidental crime. Yeah, that's true. Like, what if I accidentally you know, say something? I don't know. What's an accidental crime? Accidentally I accidentally killed someone. Right. I mean, right, though. What if I did? What if I accidentally killed someone? Like, for real accidental. Not, like, dumb accidental. For real. What if I, for real, accidentally killed somebody? Yeah. You don't know other countries' laws. Like in, I think, Japan. I don't know if this is actually a law. This could just be a lie I found on Facebook. But in Japan, if you run someone over with your car, or like you hit someone with your car, I think it was Japan. I don't know. One of the Asian countries. If you hit someone with your car, then you are then responsible for their livelihood for the rest of their lives. So like you have to pay. That doesn't sound right. Okay, but I saw this on Facebook, so it must be true. So anyway, it was one of the Asian countries. It says, like, if you are in, like, a car accident, you accidentally hit a pedestrian with your car, you're responsible for their livelihood for the rest of their lives. So what did the homeboy do? He accidentally hit someone with his car. He then backed up, floored it, ran over him again. Then he backed back over him and then drove back over them. He ran over them three times to ensure they were dead. Well, yeah. And then drove off. Horrible. Okay. Anyway, continue. I'm sorry. That's okay. That was an unnecessary tangent. That was, but it's okay. You don't know the loss. It was a, it made sense. So anyways, Tommy and Heather freaked out. They didn't know what to do. They're in a foreign country, and they just accidentally killed them all. And they just didn't really think that anyone would believe them with their act of self-defense. So they did what any rational person would do. They hid Sheila's body in a suitcase. Perfectly rational. It's exactly what I would yes. do. Well, her body didn't quite fit in the suitcase. Oh, God. So, did they cut her up? No, no, no. Okay. Oh! But they did, like, this is it in this part. I actually don't know if I added this at all, but they put her in the suitcase and, like, folded her in half. And then they did it with such force, it, like, snapped all the bones in her body. I'm sure it did. But I'm glad they didn't just really cut close. her up. No, they did not cut her up. And anyways, to get the suitcase closed, Heather sat on it. And they wrapped it up in a sheet and duct taped it because it didn't want it zip because her body would not fit in the suitcase. Um, they put the suitcase in the cab, hoping that the cab driver would just drive away with it. And it would give him more time to escape. I mean, that plan actually isn't that stupid. I mean, <laughs> I don't know about that. I feel like if I was a cab driver and someone left their luggage in my car, 
and never came back. I don't think I would take their luggage. I think I would just like set it on the curb and drive away. Your father-in-law's luggage was literally stolen in Colombia by cab driver. Well, yeah, that's true. So again, <laughs> I don't think that was that bad of a plan. Okay, maybe not. Maybe not that bad of a plan, but it didn't work because this cab driver was a good cab driver and he checked out the suitcase. So these details match the crime scene enough. And I did check out Heather really was pregnant. So the investigations started to see if this really was self-defense. They're going to believe these idiots, aren't they? Can you quit guessing on my case? No, they do not. Okay. So anyways, so the FBI got involved. I'm just trying to ruin your case like you ruined mine on the Patreon. Oh my gosh, it was an accident. I'm sorry. I won't guess anymore. So the FBI got involved to help and they interviewed family and friends in the U.S. They found that there was more to Sheila's um, dislike for Tommy. Shortly before the trip, Sheila had forbidden her daughter from seeing Tommy. She had taken away her cell phone, card, credit cards, all of it, trying to cut off ties from Tommy. A little dramatic. Heather was an adult. Yeah, she was 19. So I don't really feel like Sheila could forbid her from seeing her boyfriend, but okay. Well, she tried. She took all of her stuff away. So the investigators also found Heather's computer and searched that. And they found that Heather and Tommy had worked around this no-contact order, had been emailing each other and messaging over the internet. Of course they did, because they're young and in love, and her mother forbid her from seeing him. As an adult. Right, like that's, I mean, even as not an adult, though, that's like the telltale thing to do when your parents are like, you right. may not see him anymore. You're like, oh, I love him even more. Yes, I will. Haha, <laughs> joke's on you. Let me have all of his babies. Yeah. So their conversations that they had mainly revolved around the future and how the young couple couldn't wait to be together without Sheila's interference. Heather said this would be as soon as she turned 21. After her father's death, she found out about a trust fund totaling $11 million. Must be freaking nice. That's a huge trust fund. I know. I'm just joking, though. I'd rather have my dad alive than $11 million. Oh, yeah. But it must be nice to have a trust fund. I just felt like that would come across as like, I wish I, wish I could have $11 million if my dad dies. I'm like, no. It would be nice to have a trust fund of $11 million, though. Well, I think she probably would have had the trust fund either way, right? Isn't that how they work? I have no idea how trust funds work. Me either. I don't know. That's just TV that I know that from, so they could be wrong. Never even met anyone who has a trust fund. (laughs) No. So she would get this when she was 21, so only two short years. But that was two whole years. They don't want to wait. So they realized that they could get this money sooner if Sheila wasn't in the picture. Right. That makes sense. So they started plotting on how to kill Sheila. Well, I wonder if, too, Sheila had, like, life insurance. They probably would have gotten that, too. Yeah, definitely. And she would have got, like, their whole estate. Because she was their only kid. She was an only child. So she would have not only got her trust fund, but the life insurance and the house and all of their money and everything. Mm -hmm. So they started plotting how to kill her. When Sheila mentioned the trip to Bali with Heather, she knew that this was the perfect way to commit the crime. I disagree. I think if she was going to kill her mom, she should have done it in the U.S., not in foreign countries. That's just my two cents. I mean, I agree. Or not kill her mom. I mean, that would be the especially, best solution. Okay, but... especially because she's a social a, social, a, 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 a socialite. Yes. So where did they live? New York? Chicago. Oh, okay. Chicago. Whatever. Big city. Right. I feel like she definitely could have killed her in Chicago much easier. Chicago has a large crime rate, does it not? I believe so. I don't know. Apparently Chicago's like gun free, so maybe not. Oh, I don't know. I'm just saying. I feel like it would have been easier in the US. Yeah, I think so too. But anyways so they just thought of lots of different ways to kill her suicide drowning robbing kidnapping they discussed a multitude of possibilities and instead they beat her with a fruit bowl yes self-defense but they referred to themselves as bonnie and clyde true lovers okay so they decided that they were going to make it look like an accident that sheila fell and hit her head on a fruit bowl in their messages (laughs) yeah i don't (laughs) and how is beating her to death making her look like she fell and hit her head right yeah i don't know But anyways, so in their messages, Tommy sent Heather a picture of the fruit bowl in his room and said, do you think this is heavy enough? They agreed it was. So the investigators looked back at the footage and they saw something that they missed the first time. When Tommy came out of his room the first time, he was concealing an object. He brought the fruit bowl. And they believed it was the fruit bowl. So with these messages and the security footage, investigators felt that they could prove that this wasn't self-defense, but premeditated murder. Yeah. The FBI and the Bali police coordinated their evidence together, and the young couple was arrested for murder. They were first charged and sentenced in Bali and were facing the death penalty. The death penalty in Indonesia is carried out through a firing squad. Okay. Fun fact. That's what they were facing there, a firing squad. That sounds really scary to me. I think the death penalty is scary no matter how they do it. Yeah, but think about it. It's just like a bunch of people with guns. Yeah. Aiming them at you. Like, 
Well, anyways, so Indonesia trial is much different than the U.S. Instead of facing a jury like they would in the U.S., their fate was held in the hands of three judges. That was it. Yeah, this is not the same case as what I was thinking it was going to be. Um, I don't think that they were in Bali, but there was another couple that like went away on a honeymoon to a foreign country, and the wife ended up getting murdered, and they had a trial, and it was just like this. Like It was three judges. They call it a three-judge yeah. panel, I guess, right? Three-judge mm-hmm. panel. And yeah, yeah, it was essentially the same thing, though. So maybe it was also in Bali. Maybe, or Indonesia. Right, and yeah, an Indonesian country. I don't know where it was, but yeah. Anyways, three judges would hear the case, decide if they're guilty, and sentence them. The same three judges, which I feel like doesn't sound like a good plan, but... Uh, I mean, why? Trial by jury sounds like a much more fair thing. So the couple kept their story, self-defense. Um, the prosecutors proved that this was not the case, and it was in fact premeditated. Right. During the trial, Heather went into labor and had their daughter putting a halt in their process. Two weeks later, their trial reconvened, and Tommy was found guilty of premeditated murder, receiving 18 years in an Indonesian prison. And Heather was found guilty of aiding and abetting murder and was sentenced 10 years in an Indonesian prison. Where did their daughter go? I'm getting there. So these sentences were considered um, light. The judges took their new daughter into consideration. They thought it was not fair to make the baby grow up without her parents, so they gave him them lighter sentences. So under Indonesian law... Heather got to keep the baby with her until the baby was two. So it's like babies behind yeah. bars. But apparently that's like normal. Like they don't have to be in like a special cell thing. That's like their normal law. And then after she was two, she went into foster care in Indonesia. Um, Tommy is still in prison in Indonesia and is on track to be released in December of 2024. Heather was released on good behavior from the Indonesian prison in November of 2021 after serving seven years and two months. They deported her back to the U.S., And Heather asked that her daughter was kept there with the foster family in Bali until she knew her fate in the U.S. Because there were, like, rumors that when she came back to the U.S., she would be tried there as well. And her lawyer had told her that was a possibility. So she just wanted her daughter to stay in Bali with the foster family until she was sure that she wasn't going to prison. But officials refused and said that her daughter had to be deported back with her mother. Um, Heather was banned from Indonesia for life. As she should be. I think that's funny. They just banned her from the whole country. Sorry, bitch, you're not allowed back. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Heather landed back in Chicago, and as soon as she got back, she was arrested for conspiracy to kill in a foreign country, conspiracy to commit foreign murder of a U.S. national, and obstruction. Her daughter is currently in temporary custody with one of Heather's attorneys, and her daughter's paternal grandparents are currently fighting for guardianship, and Heather is trying to get her placed back into the care with her foster mother from Indonesia. But Heather says that's the only mother she's really ever known, so she wants her to go back to be with them. Which, I mean, is kind of a good motherly thing to do. Yeah, I mean, it seems like she actually cares about her daughter, but uh, pretty shitty she killed her mother. Yeah, pretty shitty. So if Heather is convicted in the U.S., she faces two life sentences for both of the conspiracy charges and 20 years and a $250,000 fine for the obstruction charge. Heather pled not guilty. And her lawyer requested that she be let out on bond and await her trial at home. This was denied, and Heather is currently in prison awaiting for her trial in the U.S. When's her trial date? Um, again, it keeps getting, like, postponed because of COVID. Interesting. Heather and Tommy are known as, like, the suitcase killer. Yeah. Also, in a lot of, like, the articles, it said, like, Schaefer bludgeoned Sheila's death. And it just made me think of Sterling. And, like, every time I saw the word, I thought, lagooned. <laughs> No, blagoned. Whatever. Blagoned. <laughs> blagoned. <laughs> <laughs> He's a moron. Yeah, he is a moron. I'm a roan. So for anyone that does, well, even people that do know Sterling, I'm the oldest of four, followed by Ashley. Then we have a brother named Adam and a brother named Sterling. Uh, Sterling is 15. And one day I was scrolling through Facebook and he was like, wait a minute, did that just say blagoned? And I was like, what? And he's like, blagoned. And I like looked and I was like, did you just think that the word bludgeoned is blagoned? And he was like, oh, yeah, now I feel really dumb. I've definitely been saying blagoned on Fortnite for years and no one's ever corrected me. <laughs> he's like, I've been like, haha, I just blagoned you. <laughs> so shout out to Sterling. You're dumb. Very dumb. I also was trying to um, look for her date trial, trial. date. And there's this quote from Heather. Mm -hmm. I absolutely regret what happened. I love my mom and I still do. She wasn't evil and she didn't deserve to die. 
the way that she did. I didn't kill her for money. It was for my freedom, and still is freedom. Or so I thought at the time. I think of her a thousand times a day. Well, that's sad. It is sad. But at the same time, you shouldn't have killed your mom. So this article was published in January of 2022. And it uh-huh. said that she was due back in court in April. But it's August. But you can't find anything mm-hmm. about that. Yeah, I don't know. Everything that it says that she was supposed to be back in court April 6th, but I can't find anything from her hearing on April 6th. Well, I will say that um, I was a fan of that episode. It's good. I told you it was fun. Did a good job. It wasn't fun, but you did a pretty good job of um, stepping out of your comfort zone and being uh, more enthusiastic. You sounded like you were actually having fun telling me about it. Well, I did tell you that case was fun. I do have another one I think got ready for our Patreon, though. Okay, what's that? Uh, it is also a killer couple, but it's about, like, an affair who killed, like, the spouse. But since okay. we weren't doing spouse killers, I didn't do it for this episode. Right, makes sense. Okay, we can do it for the Patreon. I also think that, like, that case was easier for me to tell because, like, I knew it really well. Yeah. So, like, I really didn't sense. need to read my notes because I knew everything I was going to say. Right. Like, with, like, Picton and, like, Bethany. And, I mean, not so much with John. I think I did, like, that one pretty good, too. I mean, I didn't know the case as well, but, like, I feel like I did okay with that one. Like, I... I was fine. Except for I was grumpy. Well, yeah, but it's okay. Um, There's just, like, a lot of information. And, like, I didn't know it all as much because there was so much of it. And, like, this case... Like, I already knew the case before. I mean, like, I knew Picton. I know Picton pretty well, but, like, there's a lot of stuff on Picton, you know? Right. I didn't know it as well. Like, I knew this case pretty well. So I probably could have told it without my notes. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, well, I think that was great. I think you did a great job. Thank you for sharing with me. Anytime. Hey, everyone, thanks for listening. If you liked what you heard and want to support a small podcast, please give us money at www.patreon.com forward slash weekly dose of wicked where you can join one of our three tiers at the five dollar level we've got the moderately wicked for seven dollars a month we've got the awesomely wicked and for all of those high rollers big ballers out there we got the ten dollar level the extraordinarily wicked as a member of our patreon you are entitled to bonus episodes Uh, You also get a one-time shout-out on our podcast, as well as some other cool little extra things going on there. So come on over. Join our fan club. Feel free to give us a follow on Instagram at weekly underscore dose underscore of underscore wicked, or you can literally just search weekly dose of wicked and we'll pop up because we're the only ones. For a direct feed of our podcast, please go to www.weeklydoseofwicked.buzzsprout.com Great news! You can now listen to us pretty much wherever you like to listen to podcasts. That's right, folks. We are big time. You can now hear your Weekly Dose of Wicked on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, TuneIn Plus Alexa, Podcast Addict, Podchaser, Pocket Cast, Deezer, Listen Notes, Player FM, Podcast Index, Overcast, Castro, CastBox, and PodFriend. The only place we can't seem to get ourselves on is Pandora. So we'll let you know when that happens. In the meantime, make sure to come back next Wednesday for your Weekly Weekly Dose dose of of Wicked. Wicked. But um, I'm...